All right, so let's quickly go over these. Structure number one is the cell wall. All right, and its purpose is to support the shape of the cell. So if they have something about support, okay, or keeping shape, something like that, they can have a mark for the function and a mark for the name cell wall. Okay, so one mark for cell wall, one mark for keeps the shape of the cell. Number three is pointing at the rough ER. Okay, the rough ER. And the rough ER's job is to transport proteins. Number six is the mitochondria. Okay, the mitochondria's job is to burn sugar for energy. Okay, number seven is the chloroplast, and its job, summed up in one word, photosynthesis. If they wrote makes food for the cell, I'll accept that today, but in the future, I want photosynthesis, because that's what it really does. Okay, number ten, cell membrane. Cell membrane controls exocytosis and endocytosis. They must have those words, as that's what I said when I taught that. I'm looking for those two specific words. Controls endocytosis and exocytosis. Okay, what gets in and out ain't good enough anymore. All right, got to have the two technical terms. And number 11, the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus gets rid of wastes, controls exocytosis, packages wastes for removal from the cell. Something about getting rid of waste products okay, would be acceptable. Also, if they wrote makes digestive enzymes for lysosomes, I would also have to accept that answer if they wrote it, as that is also true. All right. Questions on any of those? No, because it doesn't deal with the food. The food's already been broken down. Yeah. Any others? All right, mark out a 12, please. Let him see it. Put it in the box. Okay, as well as your name. And the date. Uh, what was it, October 15th or something like that? Okay in the top right hand corner. A lot of people were missing some of those things, especially magnification, size, okay, name and date in the top corner. Right? You gotta have those. And I'm the reason I'm harping on that is because you're doing exactly the same thing today, looking at different things. Right? Your lab drawings must match the the format of the template I gave you. Whether you're drawing them by hand or whether you're taking a picture, okay, of what you see through the microscope and drawing the labels on that. By the way, the people who did that I thought did an exceptional job with something that I found fairly difficult, drawing the lines onto the picture, actually making it all work. A lot of those were very, very nice. My dig here is our formats have got to match the format that was on that uh, drawing I gave you. All right, so please make sure your lab drawings, when you hand them in this time, include all of those things, especially this time, labels. Okay, I'm going to want to see lots of labels on the diagrams for this lab. All right, now, again, I don't want you to make stuff up. You're not going to see ribosomes, all right? Label what you see, but be thorough. Think about this, guys. If you can see the nucleus in a cell, then you can see the outside of the nucleus too, agreed? Then you can also see then the nuclear membrane, all right? And you should label it. Um, you know, if you can see a blank space within the cell, well, then that's cytoplasm. Label that, okay? We should be able to label quite a few things looking at these cells today, all right? I would say that even some of you may be fortunate enough to see maybe like a Golgi apparatus, maybe rough ER around the nucleus, okay? We don't usually see mitochondria, but sometimes people get lucky, okay? Um, chloroplasts, we should see those in the plant cell. If you look hard enough, they're kind of fuzzy green dots, okay? Things like that. We should be able to see all of those types of things and label them. And that's going to be important because part of your justification in your analysis is that you saw these structures that help the cell carry out basic functions. Okay, everyone with me on that one? 
Right, so just be mindful of that. We want to be as thorough as possible when we're viewing everything today. Now, we already did all the uh, pre-lab activity stuff okay, for the cell anatomy lab, so we're just going to quickly remind you all right, of the things that you're looking at when we go over there. Okay, You're going to look at probably first the monocot dicot cross-section. That's the plant cell. Okay, um, And it's, it's labeled not uh, cross-section, it's labeled X section, okay, which stands for cross on the on the um, slide case. All right, so I would say probably look at that one first. Then I would say look at the uh, generalized animal cell second, human blood third, and then the uh, wet mount you're going to make of your own cheek cells last. Okay, now when you make the wet mount of your own cheek cells, little tip here for making those show up better. They're not stained like all the other ones you're going to look at. So, they, the, the light will go through those cells very, very easily, and if you have the light really bright, you won't see them at all, because it'll just like kind of overexpose it and you won't see them. Now, there's a couple of ways to deal with that issue. The first way is to dim the light with the little rheostat that's on the side. It's a little dial that's on the base of the microscope. Okay? Um, you can turn that down a little bit, but even better than that is that right underneath the stage, on your microscope, okay? So here's the base of your microscope, and you have to excuse my drawing ability, okay? Here's the light, okay? The light kind of comes up from there. Here's the stage, and then underneath the stage is what we call the condenser diaphragm, and it has a small little knob that comes off of it. And if you adjust that knob just by turning it around, you close the iris of the condenser diaphragm. And when you do that, less light comes in, but in a different way than dimming the light and it improves the contrast of the image. Okay? Contrast, if you've done any stuff with like uh, electronics and pictures and things like that, contrast is making the difference between light and dark stand out more. And that's exactly what we want to do when we're looking at something that's not stained. We want its darker areas to stand out from its lighter areas more, and that's how you do it, is by adjusting this condenser diaphragm. So if you're finding that you can't find stuff very well okay, on your um, cheek slide cell, cheek cell slide, okay, adjust that a little bit, especially when you're on high power and you'll find that stuff just suddenly will jump out, okay, and be very, very visible, all right, and that's why, of course, on those pictures I showed you the other day, the picture of the cheek cell was quite a bit darker than all of the others, and that's because we had to close the condenser diaphragm to make those cheek cells kind of pop out a little bit more, all right, remember, if when you're looking at something on the cheek cell slide, if it's really dark, if it's green, Okay, if it's brown, it's not a cell. It's a piece of breakfast. All right? No matter how well you brushed your teeth this morning, there's still going to be breakfast in there. Okay? Your mouth is a very disgusting place. I don't know how dentists do it every day. Okay? Um, so, just be aware of that. Okay? If you if you do see something that's very obvious and very dark on that slide, it's probably not a cheek cell. All right? The other thing is when you smear that on the slide, and that's exactly what you're going to do. So you're going to swab your cheek, smear it back and forth, back and forth, all the way kind of down the slide. All right. So um, if here's your slide, okay, you're going to take your Q-tip and kind of do this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth across the middle of the slide. Then put a drop of water on that and pop the cover slip on. The reason you want to do that is if you don't, if you just kind of plop your Q-tip on there in one big fell swoop, all of your cells will be in a big clump and then they'll be hard to see. By smearing them, you tend to spread them out a little bit more, and they'll look a little more like the picture there, as opposed to one big clump of cells that's very difficult to identify. Okay? Questions before we go over to the bio lab? All right, make sure you take uh, your phone with you for sure, so you can take your pictures and then your lab drawings and stuff. It's already unlocked, so just go in there, grab a microscope. All right, so last couple of things here, guys. Make sure you have a lab drawing in your lab report for each of these four things, okay? One of the of a single plant cell, okay? Don't draw everything you saw. Just one plant cell, okay? One animal cell, one blood cell, one red blood cell, okay? And one cheek cell, all right? That's all that needs to be on your lab drawings. Everybody with me there? Because I often see people make them, this mistake. They draw this whole thing. I only want to see one cell. Okay, one cell from each one of those things that you looked at today. 
right? For your uh, analysis and stuff here, okay, remember, there's only one analysis question, but you need to be very thorough and very detailed in explaining its answer. Okay, we're looking for, you know, uh, based on your observations of different cells, what organelles are most important for a cell to function and which ones are specific to a certain mode of nutrition, okay, based on what you looked at in those cells, make sure you explain those things, all right? Yes, you probably didn't see everything that's on your cell diagram. That's fine. Just talk about what you did see, all right? Is everybody with me there? Yes? They do not. Okay, so you can you can take them out of the reasoning. All right, so red blood cells, obviously they do not have a nucleus. All right, but that's because we we talked about that yesterday. They are produced differently. Okay, they're produced by division of cells in the bone marrow. They themselves cannot reproduce. They are kind of an exception. I just have you look at blood cells because everyone always asks to. All right, so I just kind of put it in here so you can see what they look like. The big ones we were most worried about the generalized animal cell. Okay. The cheek cells, obviously, those are animal cells, okay, and the plant cell. Those are the ones we're really comparing. The blood cells were just so that you could see what blood looked like because everyone always wants to. Okay, any other questions there? All right, I will get you the Chromebooks here for the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, in general, and it's not organelle, it's organelles. Okay, so we're looking for all the ones that you think are most important. Okay, also remember guys, due date for this is October 27th. Okay, so make sure you've got it done for October 27th.